Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome down to the shop. I'm Brittany Duran from Punish Props, and today I'm going to be painting this cool gauntlet. In my previous video that you can check out in the link below, I made this guy out of a piece of EVA foam floor mat, and this is a flashlight attached to it, and it has some cool buttons on the back. This is gonna be a part of my Star Wars costume for Star Wars Celebration. So far, I have painted this with a couple coats of Angelus Black Leather Paint. I really like this kind of paint because it stays flexible on foam. And if you use a soft kind of brush, you really don't get too many brush strokes on it. The next thing I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna cover the whole thing in a light layer of silver. This is the Angelus Leather Paint in Pewter. And I'm just gonna lightly brush this on with a little chip brush. Whoops, that's, that's a lot of paint. <laughs> there we go. All right, that is a much more manageable amount of paint. I have some paper towels here, so I'm gonna just load up my brush and then kind of spread out the paint a bit and lightly brush over this entire surface. This is gonna mostly cover the black. It won't get into all the recesses, but having a darker base color when you're doing silvers really helps sell that metallic look. I broke out some of our Tamiya paints because we have more metallics in them. I have a little bit of a bronze, I think. I'm just lightly brushing it on some of the raised up button things. And I think, yeah, I'll put on these little rivets. I think the raised up buttons, are. I'm going to do brighter colors like a green or a red. I have a couple choices. We do have some different colors in the Angelus that aren't metallic. Usually the lighter colors, you have to plan to do a couple brush on layers because they don't cover too well. I've got some liquid latex art masking fluid. We picked this up in the arts and crafts store in the watercolor section. It's great for temporarily masking off areas that you don't want paint to stay. So I'm doing that on some of the silver button areas. I'm thinking of like, if I was gonna be using this button where I might be wearing off the paint that I'm gonna be putting on it. So like maybe around the center or focused around one of the edges. This, this guy, maybe, maybe like right here. Latex air dries, so once this water evaporates, then I can start brushing on a color like a green or something, and then I can peel off the latex and you'll see the silver underneath. The masking latex has dried. I used a hair dryer to speed up the process a little bit. It does have a, li a little bit of a color to it, so it looks a little yellowy, but I think it is dry. I'm lightly brushing on some colors that will end up getting weathered later. An orange, which will need another coat. The blue looks pretty good after just brushing on one coat. While this acrylic paint is drying, I'm gonna figure out what I want for this display here. There is some really cool information you can find online for the text that's used in the Star Wars universe, specifically the Galactic Basic Standard. It's called the uh, Aurebesh, A-U-R-E-B-E-S-H. Yay! <laughs> If you go to Wikipedia, you can learn all about this. There is online a translator. So if you just look up a Star Wars text translator, you can uh, type in whatever you want the text to turn into and it will translate it. Because each one of these equals a letter. It makes it pretty easy. Like that's A, that's B, that's C. Um, so I typed in some words and then inverted the colors in Photoshop so that when it printed out, where'd it go? After picking out my text and inverting the colors, I printed out this guy on our little laser printer. Uh, this word is prop tart. That's uh, what our community in Puttish Props is called. They're called the prop tarts. And this word is search, and this word is start. So the idea is I'll be at Star Wars Celebration searching for some prop tarts to get to hang out with them and talk about their cool props and costumes. I have this old roll of green acetate so it's just a transparent plastic you can buy these rolls at a plastic supply store we got this at tap plastic cut out a little piece and i just happen to have this green one so it'll be a little fallout pit boy looking i think i'm gonna wait to glue it in place now i don't want to get too much paint on this guy when i weather it now that this paint is dry i'm gonna try removing the latex pick away at the areas that had that oh there it goes yeah and it kept the silver paint under it I've got a mix of brown and black acrylics here, and I'm just gonna start adding some layers to this flat silver, especially around the lower spots, some of the shadowy areas. 
I really need to bring some warmer colors back into this metal. I think I do want to have it still look like it's a bare metal material here, but I don't want to make it look rusty. I think I want to make it look a little, little dirty, a little greasy, but I need a lot more layers in the metallic color here. I've done a couple layers of silver, put some brown in there, put some tan. These guys I brushed on a little bit of gold to make them stand out a bit. But I think the next step is I'm gonna try gluing this screen in place. I'm just gonna tack it down with super glue, and this is just paper. Just tack it down on the edges. If it ends up bleeding through and being noticeable, I can always print this out again, um, peel off the one I don't like, and do it over again. I bet like a, a spray adhesive would work great for this. I just don't wanna go and uh, like, I would have to mask off this area and then go <coughs> spray it on and wait for it to dry. And this was done with a laser printer, so the print doesn't really want to bleed at all. That's nice. All right, <laughs> I think that screen looks really cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is I got some extra silvery paint that looks almost like a shimmery white. I'm just gonna lightly drag it over some of the edges to bring out some more of the highlights. I think it's gonna get some nice natural weathering just by wearing it at the convention if I don't clear coat it. And I can always go back and do that later too. I did lightly sand the flashlight to make it more of a diffused light with just a 220 grit sandpaper. Ciao! So since this used to be on a bicycle, it has a, a low power, a bright power, and then also a disco rave mo mode. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, let's keep it on low. There we go. This looks super cool. I'm just so happy with how the paint scheme is looking. And this little display, just printing out a piece of paper and putting shiny plastic over it, I think is really effective. I may go back in later and add some more layers of paint to give it some different weathering effects, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Now all I have to do is finish the rest of my costume for Star Wars Celebration next week. I hope those of you that are in Florida going to Star Wars Celebration, I get to see you and say hi. If you're looking for more painting tutorial videos, we have a bunch of them on our site. I'll link some of them down below. Thank you so much for following along with this build. I had a lot of fun making it. It's just such a simple little design made out of just a scrap of floor mat. If you're getting into prop and costume making, I hope this encourages you to give it a try. I keep thinking I'm supposed to be shooting people. Pew pew pew. Pew 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 pew. Wait, it has a it has a rave mode. Inch, 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 inch.